Hi everyone, it's Jerry. I just uh, got paired up here against uh, uh, Stefan. It's a five minute time control game. I threw a couple seeks out, one for 3 2 and the other for 5. So here we are with a 5 0 game. So let's see how this plays out. No increment, so I cannot lean <laughs> on the increment here. Let's Let's push, grab some space. And okay. Let's support my center. So I want to hopefully have this pawn be a bit of a thorn. And this knight's journey will probably be into that c4 square. Hmm. How to play this now? I could go forward with e4 or bishop f4 and then e3. I'm going to take that approach. Yeah, bishop, bishop here, e3. And then knight d2 still, so let's meet a6 with a4. And is there a reason to not play e3 right now? Um, I don't think so. <clears throat> so this is a bit more of a conservative approach. I won't have to worry of my e-pawn uh, coming under fire. So I think just bishop to e2 right now. Or actually... I think h3. Let me consider. Yeah, I'm going to insert this move first. h3. This rules out any bishop g4. And on bishop f5, okay. On bishop f5, I think I was going to play knight d2. In fact, I think it's important I play knight d2 right now. Hmm. I wonder if I've already misplayed this. Maybe bishop d3, in fact. Bishop d3, because I don't want to allow this knight to so easily move, because uh, then I have to contend with the bishop, so, and I better, I better start hustling. <laughs> no increment, and I'm down a minute and a half, so let's, let's speed up here, and uh, get castled soon. Ooh, okay, so they're really insisting, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for that. And, okay, he has double isolated pawn, so this can't be so great. Has trouble moving the knight. I'm expecting knight e4, and I think queen e2 is a nice solid approach. Isn't that just dropping a pawn? What am I missing? Oh, bishop takes d6, knight b6. Although then I get c5. What's the story with that? I guess it's one of those just move quick and then show me what the... What the big trick is? Okay, there's the big trick. <laughs> Double attack against bishop and b2. All right, so let's get out of the way. I'm going to be losing my b2 pawn. But uh, maybe I could be playing rook to b1 at some stage, right? I have to move my knight first, or do I? Queen d3, c4. That's a bit annoying. Hmm. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reposition my knight. And if he gets to that f5 square, that's going to be one beast of a piece. A knight takes pawn, I could recapture and then be on this guy. So let's play this. Queen takes rook was being threatened. I'm ready to scoop up that b pawn. And again, don't forget about my knight one day maybe getting to f5. I do take here. It is with tempo against the knight. How bad can that really be? We're going to find out. He's a pass pawn. Hmm. Why not push him? Let's run. Just a little bit. I have my queen and my rook that could be defending this square. And maybe even a knight on e5. Should I do that right now? My queen is tied down to the defense of my knight. Two minutes. Let's push. This might be an idea at some stage. Bishop c7. Uh-huh. Threatening my bishop. Okay. What about knight h4? No. Hmm, let's see. Should I give up my bishop that easily? Bishop here. Let's re remove their dark square bishop. Yeah, I think I like that. Let's get rid of their dark square bishop. Minute 39. Hmm. Oh, my knight getting into this square will be deadly. Um, we're going to see what Stockfish has to say after this. 
Um, I have to be careful of C3, certainly. Two pieces converging on that square. I have enough defense. Of course, it would free up my, uh, my queen to do some other things. If I don't have to know, if I don't have to watch over my knight on E2, that'd be really nice. So, knight here, I would just take at some point, and then my queen is free to do some other exciting things. So, this can't be too comfortable, right? Uh, my rook isn't, uh, so accessible. Maybe knight d6, bishop takes, knight takes, knight d6. That seems a bit fishy. Hmm. That might be an idea. Three minute warning for team black. Bishop takes, knight takes, knight d6. What would I do on that? My rook is hit. Maybe... Huh. It's kind of tough. I'm not quite sure. I might as well pre-move that or no. Well, they're going to play knight d6. And Oh, they didn't play knight d6. Very surprising. I think I should move in for what? Knight g3 was my first thought. Is there something better? Yes, there is. Knight c6 right away. No. <laughs> Let's not do that. Let's go here. So that if knight takes a knight, I could recapture my knight is cemented into e5. A minute nine. Ugh. Okay. I was forgetting the queen was defending the knight. Initially I thought knight c6, and after a couple captures I could take the knight here. Not the case. Okay. Queen d6 looks really active hitting the knight. Mm, something better? I don't know. Let's go here. She's... She's doing a lot. Feels like it's close to mate, no? Queen here. It's really active. Queen e7. Wow. Really? Hmm. I shouldn't have to retreat. <laughs> I have to defend f2. Okay, they're going for a queen trade. Man, I know I should have had something better. My rook is going to get kicked. I'm going to try to be a pest. And my pawn. And my pawn is what? I'm floundering at this point. Ugh. Lost the thread here, for sure. That's going to run into a fork. Ah, oh, I should have had more. 19 seconds. Let's see if I can maybe scoop up that pawn. Okay. Oh, there goes my knight. They missed it. <laughs> Minute 15 to 2 minutes. Gonna back off. I could get that pawn. They're not gonna let me get that pawn. I could give this check. Probably preem of that. Not quite sure where I should be going. Knight right here is pretty good, no? Gonna give a check. 11 seconds. Yeah, bad time management too. Hmm. Uh, I should probably look to break down or even get in here with my king. This would be an interesting endgame if I had more time, but I spent too much time trying to Trying to do what? Actually, I should just take the knight if that happens. Hmm. Not looking good. Okay. I'm on the knight. I'm really floundering. I should have given a check. Five seconds. I'll get my king up. I should have pushed. Now I could push next, maybe. Get my king up. I'll offer a draw. <laughs> he could win on time, clearly, but this should be this should be a draw. Maybe he's the one who has to worry. Objectively. All right, I just have to move really, really fast. Point nine. Ready to promote. Point three. And I have to guess the right move now. Ugh. Okay. 
Well, let's uh, put this into Stockfish and see what it has to say about this one. Okay, let's see where we could improve. <laughs> um, that uh, final position was, uh, it should be a draw, but I very, very poor time management. Um, and hmm, I spent, I feel like I spent too much time, I clearly spent too much time trying to find some knockout in the middle game. So this is a fine setup. What I'm going for here, just to give you a feel evaluation wise, it's around a half pawn advantage and it doesn't like Bishop F5. That was my initial impression, but uh, I clearly didn't take advantage of this. Okay. Takes, takes. 94 is being called for. Huh. You know what move I missed right here is one that's probably just flat out winning. It's saying plus two. Not with taking the pawn, but rather knight h5. <laughs> you know, when did I rec when did when did I recognize that this was hmm. I think only after the queen came down to b2. Let's see, I took the pawn. The queen get down here. Only when I'd move my knight here was I starting to think about f5. You know, this is this is what I'll often do when I'm uh, just to share my uh, train of thought with with how I'll look to improve from uh, blitz games or just any games really over the board games. Uh, I'll question the timing of when I was thinking about certain moves. Why in this case was I not thinking about this f5 square a little bit earlier? I mean, I could be saying that to myself right away. As soon as I take the bishop, I might as well just reassess the uh, black king side of the board, black's king side quadrant, and uh, recognize the weaknesses. This is a glaring weakness. I only said, I kind of only said to myself, and I, I didn't voice it, but I, I, I thought, you know, okay, these double isolated pawns, but I, for some reason I just wasn't focused on getting to f5. f5 we can now consider a hole, and I could hop right to it and uh, jump on that square. Uh, queen c2 is another move here, but certainly after castles knight d7, the computer likes knight h4 with plus 2. And you really can't deal with a knight on f5, can you? This is the, the best to take on d5. <laughs> I guess uh, we're going to have the, me being up the exchange in this variation with knight c7 to follow. But uh, hopping right to that f5 square, Hmm. I wish I saw that much sooner. This still has about a pawn plus advantage. Ninety two, still a pawn plus advantage. Rook B one. It's approaching plus two. Yeah, with D six to follow, that's fine. And now knight H four instead of pushing. Hmm. Something was lost with that push here. Hmm. Another, I wonder how else I could view this position instead of pushing the pawn, because my bishop is a pretty good defender. Maybe maybe the one defender I would like to have instead of tying my rook down to the defense, although this is quite natural to just continue to push. It once again is looking to jump into that h4 square. And for a bit, I was thinking uh, that I would like to put my knight to g3 and then get to, into f5, but... I was uh, a bit blind to just this knight as well, hopping to f5 in two moves. Both of these guys are on the uh, same color square, so they could probably both maneuver to that f5 square in just two moves. Hmm. Okay, so knight h4 was once again being called out for with about a two and a half point advantage. I pushed, still maintains an advantage. It should be five is what it likes. Recapture. It's at plus three now. And then knight c6. I thought knight c6. Ah, why didn't I go? This is plus five. Knight c6. Rook takes. Rook takes. Knight takes. Oh, I could take the knight on d5. Ah, uh, that's as far as my calculation went. I didn't realize that I have this fork at the end. Mmm. That's the one thing that was keeping me from this. I even said it during the game. I was like, oh no, I forgot the queen was defending that knight. 
I didn't uh, calculate that well. At the end, I had 97. Ah, what a missed opportunity. This is still winning the whole time. It's plus six. Plus eight. It's a mate in four. Oh, no. Knight h5. Oh, what did I do? I retreated. This is still plus three, but knight h5 is a game over move. <laughs> oh, man. So many missed opportunities with this. Mate on g7. You don't stop that. Mate in three. Ah, oh, that's painful. I retreated. Still plus three. Plus two. Now I do knight h4 so much later. Um, it's still winning. And... Rook 1 takes c4. Is what it wants to do. Knight takes c4. Knight takes f5. Mm, that's that's tough to do, especially with what time I had left. This is this is was uh, had me at an advantage the whole while like, until this ending here. As soon as I took, now it just it's a tremendous shift. Uh, this ending shouldn't have been too bad. It's back to yeah. They could have taken my knight here. They took the pawn. Yeah, this is an even ending, but uh, yeah, the time really. Got the best of me at this point. Plenty of missed opportunities with this one. But uh, I didn't uh, do well enough to manage my time, that's for sure. And, uh, yeah, the final position. You well, know, it's, it's even liking white a little bit, but, uh, yeah, not a, not a good one here for uh, clock management, that's for sure. Takes. I should have been quicker with the multiple pre-moves there, but this was the final position I lost here, so... Okay, um, as usual, feel free to leave any uh, comments in the comment section below, and I'll catch you in the next video. Take care. Bye.